Hey y'all, it's Juvie, and today on this episode of Off the Shots, we have the one and only head ranger, DeAndre Moore. What's up, Julie? What's up? What's going so, on, baby? Today, he is not going to be taking shots with us, y'all, but he is going to be making us some drinks from the park, okay? Yes. And what drink is this one? This is our Pearl Stain Peach Fizz. It's a part of our spring drink menu. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, you know, I, I started off as a bartender back in the day, so sure. that's kind of what got me to being back behind the bar. Mm -hmm. Full transparency, I've not been behind a bar making drinks <laughs> in so long, so yes. I literally had to get my, my, my bartender lead to come in and show me what am I gonna do today. Right, so, right, right. But, but, but it's, it's my favorite drink on the spring menu so far. Uh, we got Lil Wayne's rum that we use to make it. Mm -hmm. um, lime, uh, Peach puree, and as well as Snoop Dogg champagne goes in it too. But I'm gonna make yours. You go get two shots of this, okay? Oh, <laughs> two shots. Period. We're gonna go up. We're gonna, gonna do it. We're gonna do it right. Batty, batty, shot across. <laughs> okay. And speaking of, you did say that you did used to be a bartender, and you started off in Houston. You said yeah, in the nightlife, it was mm -hmm. crazy. I started off bartending in Houston. Um, actually, in the gay clubs and like the after hour spots and things mm -hmm. like that, made a lot of money. Like, I, and I, I know made, you did like, with your bar fine call. Like. <laughs> Bartending actually would pay my bills, um, <laughs> literally, uh, um, literally through cash on the weekend, a Friday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. I have rent paid already, so it was some good, good, easy cash to make too. That's good. And from coming from Beaumont and you know being from the hood, you know what I'm saying, like and just being. Well, I'm not, I'm just back up. I, I was spoiled. I'm like, no, no. You know, I was from the other side of the tracks. But I like to spend He's time in the hood, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to let y'all know. I grew up in the West End. <laughs> West End, baby. I grew up in the West End, baby. Uh, exactly. And so. You're going to let him know. Um, he was not out there in the trenches, baby. I wasn't in the trenches. Like, I, I, I put myself in the trenches. I hung around the hood. I okay, wanted to, okay. I literally, like, off ATL, like how Nunu was, I wanted to be in the hood so bad. <laughs> So I was out there, like, yeah, don't, don't, yeah. I'm finna take that chain. Okay. <laughs> but being from Beaumont, being from a small community, yeah. and, you know, we really didn't have a lot of bars like that unless we went to Reds, you know, King Arthur Pubs, and yeah. black people was, we not really we going scared. to Reds. We scared. We ain't got too many know? places like that to go. You know what I'm saying? So just being like, I'm finna open up my own thing, what made you be like, I'm finna Man. Do I'm it tired was, of being behind a bar. I'm finna own a bar. Yeah, it was moving away. So I moved away. I lived in Houston after mm -hmm. college. Um, went to school at Sam Houston State University mm -hmm. in Huntsville. Moved to Houston for some time. Then moved to Dallas for a year. Moved mm -hmm. to Atlanta for a few months. And me, you was and, moving. I was moving. So I was working remote. I was working a remote oh, job um, as a national director, making six figures, like mm -hmm. all these things going on. And so it was easy for me to move around anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I'm going to take that, the opportunity to live wherever. I ain't got no kids, no exactly. responsibilities. I'm yeah. single. Let me go live. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm appreciative of the experience because it taught me so much about mm -hmm. different areas. Mm -hmm. What works, what looks good in the restaurant industry, inside the nightlife, all these things. And as a socialite, like I kind of like started soaking up what I was learning. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, it'd be dope if we had something in Beaumont that we just don't have yet that we see that I see in big cities. Exactly. And I was like, Beaumont, I feel like there's an opportunity right now. The city's gonna keep growing. It's mm -hmm. innovative. We got Lamar here, we exactly. have all these universities around exactly. here. We need something mm -hmm. for us, what mm -hmm. we feel safe to go to. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I want my piece of the pie. Exactly. And so this is my piece of the pie right here. And so this, there we go. And baby, it's a big old slice, baby. <laughs> it's a big old slice I of the pie. I appreciate that. This for you, boo. Let me know how that tastes. All right, thanks. Let's see. Ooh. We good? It's, it's so good? good. And it's he good. gave me two shots. Oh, it's good. Okay, we going. Speaking of the park, why did you name it the park? Like. Oh, I love telling this story. So for me, um, I have an older, older sibling, my brother, mm -hmm. 10 years older than me. Um, and I also come from two blended families. Mm -hmm. And so my other blended family with my sister, Peaches, who works here. She's our bottle girl lead. Yes. Um, she's also our hookah lead. You, mm -hmm. you will always see Peach running around here. Yes, you uh, will. Um, uh, but I didn't, I didn't, Peaches didn't come into my life until I was like 17 years old mm -hmm. when my dad and her mom married. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, like I said, my brother was 10 years older than me. So mm -hmm. we never really had anything in common. When I'm eight, he 18, he doing his thing, right? Right. Who wants to be around an eight-year-old little brother? Mm -hmm. So my thing was I would always go to the park, the neighborhood park. That was a meet-up spot. Right. Like, we, we didn't have cell phones as kids back then. Kids these right. days, they get them at six and five. I didn't get my first cell phone until middle school. Uh, but that was, the pl that was the place to go to. You would go ride your bike by the park or mm. scooter by the park. You mm. see some bikes over there, you knew somebody you knew was going to be there. Yeah. So the park was the meetup spot. And so I wanted to have that same place, that same feeling, that vibe where friends and family can just pull up, 
pop out, meet up, and just have a good time. Right. And so it's really an adult playground. That's what this is. Period. Kids can come. Mm -hmm. Y'all are welcome. Mm -hmm. You got to go home at a certain time, though. Exactly. 8 o'clock. So 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Some Sundays I do 7 o'clock. I need the parents <laughs> to have their time together. So exactly. So that's, that's just kind of how we kick it. That's what we do. And so that's where I came from with this idea of a park. Mm -hmm. I wanted to build uh, uh, my own park. Right. And so when I said that to my family, the first one was like, I want to build a park. They were like, what? That doesn't even, like, what are you, what are you talking about? What are you saying? And I was like, right. just... Trust me, like God has given me this vision. I know exactly how it looks. Everything, mm -hmm. every little detail in here was something that I came up with myself. You right. pay attention to everything. Like every single door in here is green. Right. If you look around, like people don't notice until I say something, but every door in here it says it's green. Um, there's orange boots and yellow boots. They go right. with the orange goes with the colors of my park sign. The yellow goes with the yellow signs that I have on the wall over there. Mm -hmm. It kind of just makes sense. Even the color of this bar, the color of this bar is the same color of the outline of the outside at the bottom down there. So whenever you're coming in here, mm -hmm. you see this blue steps as you're walking up. Everything and you see is. that, but you see that blue, you're going to think blue again. And so you're going to think, oh, shit, maybe I shit at the bar too. Like, it just kind of mm -hmm. registers. Like a and little it's a programming. Process. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's programming. It's baby. programming. It's programming. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how we got to this point. Okay. And I did hear you say and talk about Peaches, who is the head. So you are, the business is very family blended. It's so family blended. Yes. It's so friendship oriented. Like my yes. friends work here. I get to work with my best friends ever. Like, so my bottle lead, my, my, my bartender lead, it's one of my best friends. Yes. We grew up together in church, since we were in church together. Like, his yes. mama and my mama sat one pew away from each other every Sunday. <laughs> we grew up, like, Bible said together, like, youth church, everything. And my bottle girl, I mean, my, my assistant general manager, mm. my best friend, Eshawn, like, we grew up together, same thing, in church. She was yes. actually my high school sweetheart at one point. Um, love her to death. And, like, those are people, it's people who I trust that I'm around. Yes. And that's what I love and the most. And that's what you need. Yeah, yeah. And then my co-owners, are my family. I have mm -hmm. a big family. I'm the yeah. baby of 69 first cousins. Um, and so four of them are part of this with me. They, yeah. they came and they invested into this. They entrusted me with my vision and stuff. Even, even when they couldn't see it, mm -hmm. they still took a chance on me. And I'm forever thankful for that. And my mom as well. So my mom and pop, like, exactly. mama run the kitchen, pop on maintenance. I was like, just going to say, yeah, mama yeah. is in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. so everybody's around here. It's very family oriented. And I always want anybody and everybody to feel like that. When they walk in here, you just feel like you're part of the family. Like, exactly. you just feel like you belong here. Exactly. So you can have a fun time. You can cut up, no matter exactly. if you're black, white, Mexican, Hispanic. Everybody like, comfortable. Everybody, everybody should be comfortable to come in here and just let loose. That's why there's a 10-foot fence outside. Exactly. Leave your problems out there. Everything inside of here is just care and stress-free. What happens at the park? Stays, stays at, at the, the park. park baby okay and just by keeping everything in the family keeping it trusting do you ever feel like it was a pressure for you to have to like now that you're up now now that everything with the park is going on now uh -huh. do you feel like now it's a pressure where okay i have to make sure that everything is taken care of with my family like i have to make sure that everybody's yes. taken care of now like yes is pressure? yes it's so much pressure i'm literally like constantly thinking about ways to expand this mm -hmm. how do i take the investments that everybody has put into this right here mm -hmm. and make sure that we multiply this tenfold like mm -hmm. i really i believe that like, god is gonna do it but like they say, faith without work is dead. Like, it's right. nothing's going to happen. So, yeah, I know it's going to happen, but what do I need to do as a leader? What do I need to do as the CEO of this company mm -hmm. to ensure that we continue to expand and flourish and multiply? I had my mom retire last summer, like, from her main job. Right. Like, just retire, relax. Like, we got this. We'll do this over here. Like, we're going to figure it out. So, it has to work. There's right. no if, ands, or buts about it for me. Like, this is it. Yeah. This is, it's got to. So, and it will. Yeah, it it's, will. Yeah. It said, it so says it is so it's done. done. It yeah, is and done, you got two. When two agree, that's it. That's all we needed. It's done. It, it's so it cool. is what it is. Bravo. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So, how does it feel with all of the accomplishments that you have done with winning the GLAD, being able to go to the White House? Like, yeah. how does that feel? Um, it's some. It's surreal sometimes. Um, I kind of. Forget about it. I get lost in the things until yeah. I go through social media. I'm like, wait, I did all that? Like, I've already done all these things? And it's like last week. And I, young. Yeah. And I, yeah. Black. <laughs> young. Yes, yes. Like, last week I was, I was in D.C. I mean, I was in Houston last week with the White House officials mm -hmm. and CDC and HHS talking about health care and, like, ensuring that we're putting guidelines in place for people living with HIV and mm -hmm. people are able to take care of themselves. And so, like, people see the party side of me, the exactly. park. They see this person. But there's a whole, there's many there's hats that other, I get to wear. Exactly. Yeah, and so, very, very. All those things mean something to me. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of jobs. I do a lot of things. So, yeah. yeah. Hey. You have been an activist for about a decade now. Yeah. And just to speak on just topics that are going around right now, and especially with Easter just passing yeah. and everything that's going on about this 
controversy about the Joe Biden yeah. and making everything the transgender day. How do you feel about that? What are your thoughts about that? Um, I believe that, so I know that there was a thing about like Easter and like transgender day of visibility being on the same day. Mm -hmm. Easter moves around. Right. Transgender, transgender day of visibility does not move. It's, it's the 31st like of the year. Yeah, I was it's, it's that, but, but it's important that we recognize that trans people are people. Those are our brothers. Those are our sisters. Mm -hmm. Whether you agree with it, whether you believe in it, whether you understand it or not, those are human beings. And Period. so those are the, we have to be sure that we look out for one another because um, there's a quote that uh, a famous activist said uh, said that you know um, what was it injustice for one of us is an injustice for all of us or something along those lines I can't remember it directly right now but mm -hmm. but it's along those lines that that um, you know if, if one of us doesn't have justice no matter what we believe in no matter what isn't right then it's injustice for all of us so mm -hmm. an attack on that person today that will be an attack on me tomorrow exactly and so they're always looking for somebody and it, oftentimes we see okay. the oppressed start becoming the oppressors and mm -hmm. so you, we look for a community or a marginalized community that might not be the greatest majority, and we mm -hmm. start oppressing them, and that's not okay. We have to continue to uplift people because um, at the end of the day, the Bible says, love thy, bro love thy brother, love thy neighbor. Mm -hmm. It's not up to us to judge. It's not up to us to try to bring down judgment or, or, or pass judgment on anybody. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. Nobody is perfect. He is mm -hmm. who he is without, the, without sin. Let them cast the first stone. Period. And we all have sin. We all do our own things. We all do our own dirt. People, trans, trans persons just want to live just like everybody else. That's it. And be free. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very hopeful. I'm very appreciative of the president for taking a stand and speaking up for the rights of those people who are marginalized. Mm. So. And that's, this is that's that. all she wrote. That's, that's all she wrote. I mean, that's I all mean, he wrote. That's, that's, all, that's like, all you can, can say, you say to that. that. Yeah. But speaking of that, do you think that you would in the future start a gay club for the community in Beaumont? Oh, God. Like, do surprised. you think? Every... I feel like every week there's somebody asking me. Or to have a day yes, at the say, park so, or something. So, so people are always asking me. I've had investors. I've had people offering me money to come in, be the face. I'm like, hey, can you open up a gay club here, a bar here? I know the community. I've learned the community. It's for me, the, the, the gay community, the LGBTQ plus community in Beaumont isn't mm -hmm. big enough yet do you to think? do that. There's not on... The, there are folks in this community who are supportive mm -hmm. behind closed doors. There are yes. folks in this community who are part of the LGBTQ plus community behind closed doors. You, they aren't out. And so to do right. that, would give the, it's like, is it really going to be profitable? But I do think that, that folks should have a space where they feel comfortable. And that's what this already is. Now, do yeah. I plan to do things here? Yes. I plan to have a drag brunch during Pride Month. Yes. Like, you know, I want to like, yes. like drag me to brunch, all these things. We have so much stuff in plan yes. and so much stuff in store for everybody. Mm -hmm. Myself, as a gay black man here in the mm -hmm. South, like, I want to do things too. Like I have fun, but yes. I, I also, as a businessman, yeah, I think, think about, about what's going to be profitable. I mm -hmm. go and open that up. Is it going to really flourish? Is it going to be it? Because there's right. been multiple gay clubs open downtown and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Right. You like, where are they now? I was just going to say, oh my yeah. gosh, I'm yeah. sorry. Didn't yeah, they didn't, they never, they, they just they didn't that. flourish. And so it's kind of hard out here. Yes, I definitely understand. It is really all about thinking about the business perspective yes, of exactly. things on a, outside so, of the fun yes, side. So yes, I do understand. Exactly. But we will have our month, y'all. We're going to have our month. I'm a, I promise I'm going to turn it up. It's going to be real good. We're going to do a drag bingo. We're going to drag me to brunch. All these kinds of things. So okay, I'm so excited. So we definitely have something to look forward to, y'all. Yes. And we're closing out this episode with Dre, y'all. The yeah. drink is good, y'all. So okay. definitely... Get the drink. Listen, and let me tell you right now, this one right now, because I have other things to do. I'm working today. I got to count money and all that kind of stuff. Don't want to be too far under the influence. Mm -hmm. But I'm coming to sit down in your space, and I'm going. I'm taking shots. I want the hard questions. I want to, oh, we, matter, no, fact, we in matter, there. matter of fact, you know what? I want to play Risha Please or something. Like, can we do oh, that? Oh, we going let's, let's really turn it out. Let's do that. <laughs> this, this next time, he going to be on the floor. I was, we going to see. I like to answer questions. I'm an I'm a open book. I am open. I'm honest. I want you to ask. Give me down to the nitty gritty. Get all in my business. Oh, I like we that. definitely. Oh, since he said that, <laughs> so everything is off limits. Everything is off limits. So What's if up? you know Dre, you don't know Dre that day. You're going to find day. out. You're going to find out a lot about me. Oh, try. I'm excited. No, thank y'all so much for coming. Hang out with me at the park, man. I thank appreciate y'all. Thank you for having us. Of course. Thank you for having us. Should we clean? Cheers, Cheers. lady. Thank, thank you. you. And don't forget to follow us on off top underscore and me, Ken Juvie, and DeAndre, the head ranger at DeAndre B. Moore um, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And don't forget to also follow the Park on Calder. Yeah, that too. Duh. Make sure you follow that too on Instagram and on Facebook. We don't appreciate it. it. Stay up to date on everything. All right, y'all. Bye. Bye.